Hello and welcome back. Lecture 5-1 AC Circuit Analysis with Operational Amplifiers. Students should be reading section 9.7 of their textbook as well as pages 34 to 37 of Professor Griggs' course notes in order to follow along during your study time. The objectives of today's lecture is that students should be able to solve AC circuits for output voltage, current, and gain. Recall that the two-port model for a differential amplifier is given by the following figure, which models it as a voltage-controlled voltage source, and that there is an inverting and non-inverting input, and two external power supplies, and an output voltage V-out. We can also model it with the realistic model, where we also have an output resistance R-out, where A is a really large value, and we like to say that the op-amp has an infinite input impedance. When we have negative feedback, we use the two ideal assumptions and apply Kirchhoff's current law at the input um, terminals to solve for voltage, current, and power. So the two ideal assumptions are the virtual short condition, which means that voltage at the non-inverting and inverting terminals is the same, and the infinite input impedance condition means that the current into the positive and negative terminals of the op-amp are zero. The op-amp operates in its linear region between the positive and negative power supplies and saturates at the output outside of that range. Example one, for the following circuit, redraw it in the frequency domain and find the output voltage. So here we have a circuit that has a frequency of 10 to the fifth radians per second given in the time domain. So we use that frequency to rewrite our impedances in the frequency domain, as well as to write our input voltage as a phaser. So the impedance of a capacitor is negative J over omega C, or negative J over 10 to the fifth times 100 picofarads, which equals negative J 100,000 ohms. So then in the frequency domain, the circuit looks like the following. You're going to have the 160 kilo ohm resistor. You're going to have your voltage source as two angles zero degrees in series with a 20 kilo ohm resistor and an 80 kilo ohm resistor that goes to ground. And then in our feedback loop, we're gonna have a 200 kilo ohm resistor and our negative J 100 K ohm capacitor. So next we're gonna write a KCL equation at the positive terminal. So we have VP minus two over 20 K plus VP over 80 K, which equals VP is 1.6 volts and since VP equals V negative and we have that at the KCL at the negative terminal is VN minus zero over 160 K plus VN minus V naught over 200 K plus VN minus V naught over negative J 100 K. So when we solve for V naught, we get that V naught is equal to 2.15 with an angle of negative 21.8 degrees. We convert it back to the time domain, we get 2.15 cosine 10 to the 5t minus 21.8 degrees and the units are volts. Example two, for the following circuit, VG is equal to cosine 100t. Redraw the circuit in the frequency domain and find the output voltage. So omega is 100 radians per second. So we're gonna take the circuit in the time domain and redraw it in the frequency domain where the source voltage is one angle zero. We have a 10 kilo ohm resistor, another 10 kilo ohm resistor, and the impedance of the capacitor is negative J over omega C, or negative J over 100 times one micro, which is negative J 10 kilo ohms. Then we have our positive terminal tied to ground and our feedback resistor is 200 kilo ohms. And then we have an output resistor that's 20 kilo ohms where V naught is. So now we're going to do KCL at V1, and the KCL equation is V1 minus one over 10K, plus V1 minus zero over 10K, plus V1 over negative J 10K. Notice that V positive is zero, so V negative is zero. And we get that V1 is equal to 0 0.447 with an angle of negative 26.57 degrees. 
So now we're going to do KCL at V negative, zero minus V1 over 10K plus zero minus V0 over 200K, which equals zero. So V0 is equal to negative 20 V1 or 8.94 with an angle of 153 degrees. So converting our answer back to the frequency domain, we get that V0 of T is equal to 8.92 cosine 100t plus 153 degrees. Example three, given the following circuit for the output voltage V naught of t at 50 kiloradians and also 50 radians per second. What we're gonna see here, and the reason we do this at two frequencies is that this is actually a filter. And so what you're going to see is that when you evaluate it at two different frequencies, your output changes and we will determine if it's a high pass or low pass filter. So the impedance of the capacitor for 50 kiloradians per second is negative J over 50 K times four nano or negative J 5,000 ohms. At 50 radians per second, it's negative J 5 million ohms. So the feedback impedance is the resistor in parallel with the capacitor. So ZF is going to be 500K in parallel with negative J5000, which equals 49.995 minus J499.5 ohms, or the feedback impedance at 50 radians per second is 500K in parallel with negative J5 million, which is 495,049.5 minus J, 49,504.95. Since this is an inverting amplifier, we can use that V naught equals negative ZF over ZI times VI, or negative 49.995 minus J49, 499.5 over 20K times 0 0.5, which equals 12.55 with an angle of 96 degrees in millivolts. So that's a very small value. Or at 50 radians per second, we get V naught equals 495, 049.5 minus J495, 049504.95 over 20K times 0 0.5, which is 12.43 with an angle of 174 degrees. So we now see that we have a low pass filter here because as the frequency increases, the output voltage decreases.